Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and selamat sejahtera. My name is Putri Hani Nazirah binti Muhammad Zain. I am from TSLB2 Ambilan June 2020 and my lecturer for EDUP3013 Philosophy and Education in Malaysia is Dr. Kamaruddin bin Abu Hassan. So for today's topic, I will be talking about profession and professionalism. So let's take a look at the table of contents that we will go through today. So the first one is we will going to have a look at teacher professionalism. Next is professionalism self-enhancement. And the last one is lifelong learning. So let's take a look at the first uh, subtopic, which is teacher professionalism. So first of all, we need to know that the teacher profession is the oldest profession in the world and is now entering another new era, which is the modern era that we are living in right now. Back then, the role of a teacher was only focused on teaching and deliver the knowledge which means that the teachers back then were only delivering the knowledge and only teaching uh, her or his subject to their students. However, now a teacher should always be prepared and alert in using various of teaching methods efficiently and effectively in order to approach the students. In the 21st century, a teacher should always be creative innovative and be effective in delivering the information in order to approach the student's demand as knowledge worker, which means that a teacher should always be prepared and always thinking creatively because the student's demand uh, to the teacher are really high and they want they always wanted their their question to be answered effectively by the teachers. Alright, looking back at our main topic for today, which is profession and professionalism. So, what is profession? Profession is actually referring to an occupation that performs an important social function. Kamu Stay 1005 defines a profession as a special field of employment that requires education and competence as well as high skills and special training. For example, law medicine, teaching, etc. On the other hand, professionalism is a characteristic or attributes found among members of the profession. So from here, we can see the difference. Profession is actually an occupation while professionalism is the characteristic to the profession. And there are four characteristics or attributes that could be found among members of the profession. So the first one is master in depth knowledge for example if you are taking medical course so you need to know fully about what is your course is about and what are you going to learn and how to be expert in your course and the second one is to be competent and expertise in a particular field uh, for example uh, the medical course again so you need to be expert in your field and the third one is code of ethics to control the behavior on, of members. So from here, uh, it means that we need to follow the rules, we need to follow the ethics because um, we need to be professional for our profession. And the fourth one is consent given to a profession by society to operate, which means that you need to get the disease, you need to graduate first in order to carry out your duty in order to perform your career. Alright, so uh, we will take a look at skills that teachers should master in. So the first skill is learning skill. A teacher should know first how to learn effectively so they can use the same method to their students. And next one is thinking skills. Teachers need to think outside of the box in order to find the solution of certain situations. And next one is planning skills. 
teachers should have the skills in planning activities or planning in what they are going to do to improve themselves. And next one is teaching skills. Being a teacher, we need to know how to teach our students. If we do not use the correct way, our information will be delivered wrongly. And next one is facilitation. Facilitation means uh, you know the way to carry out your teaching or doing your activity with your students. Uh, which means that uh, if you are having a discussion or doing um, group works, you know how to carry it out smoothly with your students. And next one is evaluating. Evaluating means to form an idea on what is going on, let you know how to analyze the situation and come up with a solution. And the next one is managing. Managing means a teacher should know how to manage their staff first so they can manage other things like their students, their work and their surrounding effectively. And the next one is ICT. ICT means information and communication technology. A teacher should know on how to use the ICT so that their work will be better. And next one is communicating. Communicating means um, a teacher should have the communication skills um, so that they can communicate with their students and people around like the student's parents and their colleagues without having misunderstanding. Alright, so we have talked about the skills. Now we will talk about the aspects. A teacher should have there are three aspects that a teacher should have the first one is knowledge of a subject for example if you are teaching mathematics then you need to have the whole knowledge about mathematics and if you are teaching English then you need to have the whole knowledge about the English subject itself and the second one is knowledge of the students like you need to know how to analyze your student you need to know how to discover the weakness and the strength of your students and also you need to know how to find ways to help your students. It doesn't matter in, in terms of academic or um, not non-academic but you need to know how to see your students, how to view them and how to help them. And the third one is increasing teacher professionalism. Uh, as a teacher, you should always all the time try to increase your teacher professionalism because uh, you might be lacking in something that you don't even realize so you need to always increase your skills your knowledge in order to be a really professional teacher all right so now we will talk about the characteristic of a professional teacher there are actually a lot more characteristics that a professional teacher should have. But I just list down five of the most uh, basic characteristics that a teacher should have first. So the first one is always be professional. No, it doesn't matter in what time or in what place, you should be professional. So let's give you a situation. Imagine yourself um, facing the student's parents um, during exam report day and suddenly the parents started arguing with you because their children never achieve good results. So you cannot be mad at them or fighting them uh, because you know your worth or because you know you have worked hard to help uh, their children. But you need to be calm and think of a solution to help the parents understand their children. So for example, you can list down all the weaknesses um, that the children have and then um, give out ways to uh, solve the problem. Okay, so the next one is act on the basis of work ethic. So um, a teacher is a noble job and we have the, uh, the work ethics that we should follow. So we need to act on the basis of work ethics and act on to be the professional because if we follow the rules, if we follow the ethics, we will be professional. And the third one is strong morals, which is you need to know 
what is good for you, what is bad for you, and what is good for others, and what is bad for others. And you need to apply yourself the good moral values because your students is always watching you. So you need to show them good morality and and help by having good moral you will know yourself better and then uh, the fourth one is wish with knowledge so yeah as a teacher you need to be knowledgeable um, not only in your own subject but also you need to know um, how to look at your surroundings how to um, solve various type of problems like you always have the idea to solve the problem and also you need to know in depth about your uh, field about your subject so that your students can always look up to you and the fifth one is always strive to improve the quality of teaching outcomes so as a teacher you need to know a lot of methods to deliver your information to teach your student so and this is um five ways to improve teaching professionalism so the first one is attend any courses or seminar to improve your teaching professionalism uh, so uh, nowadays there are a lot of course or seminar uh, or discussion in order to improve uh, the teaching professionalism of a teacher so we need to be active joining it because um, if we join it we can um, gain a lot of knowledge and also we can improvise our skills better and the second one is do research and writing so for example uh if you are having a difficulty in order to help your students so you can do research on that uh what i mean by research is you need to analyze uh what is your student weakness and how to overcome it so the third one is put efforts towards self-development so you should know yourself first if you are weak at this aspect then you need to work hard to improve the aspect because everything can be improvised if you work hard on it so the fourth one is alert to the latest educational and technological developments so since we are living in, a, in the modern era where science and, and technology keep evolving so we need to always be alert to take note on what is the latest educational and technological developments that we can use in order to improve our teaching professionalism and the fifth one is self-reflection self-reflection self means self-assessment so we need to analyze ourselves um, and to see what is our weakness what is our strength and what can we do in order to improve ourselves to be a better version of ourselves Alright, so for the second subtopic, we will talk about professional self-enhancement. Alright, so what is professional self-enhancement? Professionalism enhancement means to improve the prestige of teaching profession. Highly dignity will make teacher professionalism highly praised and have high value and quality. So to raise the standard of teacher professionalism, teachers need to be prepared to hold the real responsibilities of a teacher, adherence to ethics and willingness to accept any changes that happen, which means here that you don't be a teacher just because you want a job. You don't be a teacher just because you want the money, but you become a teacher to hold the real responsibilities of a teacher to help your students and to make the future generation to be a better generation all right so that you guys must wondering how to carry out our professional self-enhancement well there are actually five ways to carry out our professional self-enhancement so the first one that we can do is doing action 
research. So action research can revitalize the entire learning community as well as aid teachers in changing or reflecting on their classroom practices. So basically, it leads on to personal or professional development because we learn through action. So uh, the second one is doing in-service training. In-service training is an activity to enhance skills, knowledge, and change attitudes towards work. This is also to enable teachers to acquire new understanding and instructional skills. And the, the third one is doing reflection. So for as usual, doing reflection means we need to um, reflect back on ourselves. We need to analyze back on ourselves what we get from the certain certain situation. So we need to know what is the weakness we get from there and what is our strength and what to improve. And the fourth one is doing collaboration. So for example, you are doing a collaboration from uh, the teachers from another school doing collaboration to do a seminar or discussion or probably um, doing collaboration for uh, extra class for your students so from there you can learn uh, a lot more of the other teacher skills uh, and also learn about how the other teachers are teaching their students so from there we can um, develop more of our skills to improve um, our career as a teacher. And the last one is e-learning. E-learning is actually a system based on formalized teaching but with the help of electronic resources. Because we are living in a world full of technology now, there are a lot of ways that we can use to improve our self-enhancement to be a professional teacher we just need to work hard to use various type of methods that were provided uh, today so for the last subtopic that we were going to have a look at is lifelong learning so lifelong learning actually allows a teacher's knowledge to be more dynamic so the teachers can convey a lot of information to their students and the presentation of the information about knowledge which means that our teaching skills will create students confidence and trustworthiness towards a teacher so for example if you can answer your students question and you can um, provide them with a lot more extra information there will be confidence and they will trust you as a teacher and they will always look up to you because they know that you are actually a really professional and you know a lot of um, general knowledge and so on that they don't know about. And lifelong learning is basically that you don't stop learning even though you, you are a teacher now but you never stop learning. So, how to carry out lifelong learning culture? So, there are actually seven ways that we can use in order to carry out this culture. So, the first uh, one is reading culture. So, reading culture is actually to gain more knowledge and enhance our thinking skills. So, we need to always read books or read article journal passages uh, to know about our surrounding to and to provide a lot more uh, to our skills and the second one is thinking culture thinking culture uh, is to strive our uh, thinking through the process of analysis synthesis and criticism so when we always thinking we can analyze uh, the situation and critic the, the situation like um, how does this situation happen, what is the cause of it, and also creating the hypothesis and synthesis to it. And the third one is learning culture. Learning culture is to develop more knowledge and skills through various methods of learning. And the fourth one is creative culture. Creative culture is to disseminate knowledge or skill orally or not 
verbally as a contribution to the society. And the fifth one is deliberative or we can say it as permusyawarah in Bahasa Melayu. So, and through deliberative process, every decision making or on educational matters will be carried out by deliberation in a team and not individually. And the sixth one is reflection. Reflection is self-assessment process where we analyze ourselves, we recognize what our weakness, what our strength that we get from a certain situation or a certain process and then we think of a way on how to improve it. And the last one is e-learning. So looking at the fast development of science and technology, there are various types of education that have been tried and introduced for use in educational institution in order to address demands and future challenges. So for example, or online distance learning education, uh, radio and television and also um, education shows uh, on online platforms such as YouTube that we can use. Alright, I have prepared one hot question for you guys to answer it. Lifelong learning allows a teacher's knowledge to be more dynamic. Explain using appropriate examples of how a teacher can practice lifelong learning. So you guys can try answer this question using your knowledge uh, and understanding in what is lifelong learning.